uh, on any issue, please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Bob Medeiros, for now on Drive, Ledgewood, New Jersey. I have several questions, so I would appreciate a little bit more than three minutes, about four minutes. As a resident of 30 years of Roxbury, New Jersey, it's been a busy week. Uh, first of all, a uh, busy two weeks since the last, we had a meeting of the uh, Ryanton Head Waters Association at the Roxbury uh, Environmental Group, and he presented a, um, a presentation to prove that the water in Drake's Pond is contaminated and it's caused by the, uh, by the uh, Fenimore landfill. So as a concerned resident of Roxbury, New Jersey, I'm requesting to the town council to have Bill Kimball, director of the policies and science, a spokesperson for the Ryanton Heck Waters Association, speak at the town council so that it's down on record that a established organization has uh, determined that the uh, Fenimore landfill is contaminated with water. Second, um, with this knowledge and with the knowledge that's been released by the DEP in this past two weeks, stating that the water is contaminated and that they had knowledge of this prior to the Bernardi uh, landfill being brought in, I'm requesting uh, construction of a concrete uh, collection pond at the bottom of the uh, basin to collect the contaminated water and have it trucked out per EPA specifications so that it will slow down the contamination of the, of the leakage and until we could determine what is the best solution to take. Uh, third, core drilling samples in various locations on the landfill to establish chemical testing of the water conditions to develop a resolution to stop the contamination. We have to know what to test for before we know how to cure it. Therefore, the Ryanton Heck waters will require soil samples, which best is resolved by core sampling. And third, uh, let's see, core samples, drilling, construction, concrete. Uh, my last question, uh, request is that we bring in the EPA, that we send a formal request to the EPA to come and investigate the DPA's, uh, how did I put it? Let's see. Um, <coughs> I'll say it. their failure to properly close this landfill. The landfill has not been, with no means, closed by any engineering standards whatsoever. I have proved time and time again that the water has been contaminated. It's been released by the DP that it's contaminated. We don't know exactly what the contaminated material are so we have to dig for it and make some further testing we need to get down to this problem and i am requesting those four items through the town council especially to bring in the epa and investigate the handling of the closure process from the dep uh, I'll take all those under consideration. A lot of these I know have taken place where it has been before uh, the Environmental Commission. Uh, as you know, uh, we've been to EPA before, but uh, it's, uh, it's a new round, so uh, we'll uh, take a look at all these issues. Uh, can I get a, a, an answer if you are willing to um, host the Ryanton Headquarters. Uh, I don't have associates. the information right now, so if it, if it warrants, yes, we have no problem. But like I said, I know the. I have I his the, card. I know. Yeah, we have we have his contact. You have the contact. Yeah. What environmental what information are you requesting or needing? Oh, well, we just want to hear from the our environmental commission, who's our 
you know, expertise on the on the subject, get their feedback on on the presentation uh, report that was brought out by uh, the Raritan Headwater Association. So you you want to read uh, Kimball, right? Yeah. Kimball, right? You want to go to the Roxbury. Uh, environmental group and find out what their status is on this? Or I, 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 I I, you the, lost me. I haven't uh, seen the report, Bob, so I, I, it's not fair for me to make a comment. If it's something that's warranted, um, it, we will. I know a lot of the public, or some of the public, was at the uh, the uh, environmental commission meeting. Correct. Uh, but is it a week ago, boy? A week and a half. A week and a half ago. I was there, and we presented it, and uh, apparently uh, it's something essential that the residents should have on record with the town is taking place, so that it's public record, not just a uh, Facebook uh, video. Uh, the report, the report is a matter of public record because it has been submitted. But I understand what you're saying. We'll still take a look at it. Can I expect a response by next meeting? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? Please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Bob Schultz, Randolph, New Jersey. Um, Marty, you were at the meeting at the Environmental Commission. Um, you had said that you were going to ask the council to uh, have Bill Kibler come in. Is that still the plan? I haven't given a report to anybody yet. We're not even at that point on the agenda. Is that happening tonight? You're going to give the report? I'm going to give a report on it. Excellent. Is there any update with Fenimore from the township? Uh, as of this week, I don't think. Is there anything new? Um, oh, you got it. I think there were some questions that uh, Mr. Hall had asked, at the, or that, you, that Mr. Hall put together at the last meeting, so I think I can go over those because we have some answers to those. So one of the answers is why is the larger oxidizer is necessary? And again, this information was posted in the last update from the NJDP, and again in an email from uh, Mr. Putman to uh, Bill Morocco as well. Why is the implementation of the new oxidizer delayed? Uh, as per the NJDP last update, work was to be done in February. They brought, they have brought the oxidizer in. I, I understand it's posted on the website. It is posted on the website. I understand that the unit would be delivered, uh, which it was delivered. Installation should occur in March. I've requested the NJDP to provide an updated fact sheet for posting on our website on three separate occasions since the last meeting. Uh, follow up from the ATSDR. The team is still draft. This is from uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Dykin. The team is still drafting the report. Once we complete the draft, it will start our internal clearance process, which can be lengthy, several months or more, but sometimes can go more quickly. Uh, discussing water tests at the basins. Uh, the NJTP has indicated that they're going to be doing some groundwater groundwater monitoring tests on their wells. Uh, in March, weather permitting, and uh, is the sponge technology to be used in the future? A passive system is planned. Uh, the timing will obviously be determined by the NJDP. It was in their closure report from a while back. Uh, and again, I've asked for an update from the NJDP directly on these. And um, post the stack test results, we actually have the continuing monitor results, which has been posted. We've asked for those on a regular basis. Uh, when will the firmware fixes be positioned on all the monitors? They've been done. So uh, according to Bruce Groves, he's gone out and done the repairs and the, and the replacements as needed. And residents are still smelling H2S. Um, let's see. I asked for a follow-up on that as well from Ed Putnam. Give me just a second here. <coughs> we have had two issues over the last month or so where there's an it's issue. Just one little, it's an easy one here. On site. They received nine complaints on the 11th of February. 
which is the date that a, they left a valve open as they were doing some repairs, and they've received two complaints since then. The last one was on the 22nd from, from the residents. Um, and I think that was all of the uh, questions that, that I believe Bob you asked the majority of those from the last meeting, no, Fred wrote about it. No, many of those have were posted or have been posted. So. Yeah, in various forms or not. We've been getting a lot of responses from the DEP lately. So. Um, I, I know one of the, the questions I had was, was the township going to do any air or water or soil testing? Um, because that hadn't been done since 2013, which I still haven't found anything on the website that's been there since. Yeah, June of 14, right, Chris? I believe it was April, but maybe we may have posted it June. Yeah. Uh, April of 2014 was, posted, was our last posted, Bob. Was tested. Go back to 13, Bob. And again, the, the township did it, or yeah. the DEP? No, the, no, the township posted. We posted. Uh, Council Member Schmidt was able to find those from April two thousand four. The last few weeks that wasn't there, it right. was. It was there. So June of two thousand fourteen is on the website yes. under April. the testing portion of it. But in addition to that, is that the the DP is indicating they're doing the monitoring while testing sometime in March, weather permitting. And I always, as I've said to you many times before, I'm always leery of presenting information from the DP. So this is the best information. This is why I always ask for an update on a regular basis. But they're saying they're doing the monitoring while testing. Our health department is prepared to go out and do sediment and, and testing again on the streams, which we've been doing fairly regularly, and we're prepared to do that as well, too, weather permitting. And any air testing? Because we, we still think there's gases coming out of there, I mean, it, of some type. And the fact that, for instance, Shannon's monitor just last night or the night before was reading very steady and she's, you know, saying it's in her house indicates to me that something else is going on. And there's been talk of other gases and ethyl carp. I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, that came out a year or two ago as well. Right, but the DEP. Right, and the DEP never tested for it. So, they and they admitted, I've seen an email that they said, we never tested for it because the discoverers should take care of it. Well, we all know that that's not 100%. So, is there any plans to do any air testing? Well, if I, if I remember correctly, it, it's, it's because it's similar to, but less toxic than SO2, correct? I think there's some information coming out, maybe directly to the to the residents that we can review and post on our website. Okay. So it, it is toxic. What's more toxic? It, from oh, no, my so standpoint, not, I don't care. We're not care. trying to rationalize whether <laughs> something's more toxic than another. I think it, I think it fell within the same umbrella, but we'll check on that. I think Chris just said it's detectable at lower levels, if I'm not mistaken, than hydrogen sulfide. Yeah. So also, one of them does dissipate when it comes out of the stack. Right, and then also the ethyl, whatever it is, I, I just um, it's is methyl to the other, it does not. Right, and, and it's water soluble, which means it'll sit in the water it as well. Water soluble, that's right. right. Or unstuck. Yeah, I think we, I, I think we have some more information we can post on yeah, our website. I think, uh, I, I think uh, Bob sent something out recently. So. Correct. Yeah, we can post on the website. Thanks, Bob. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? Please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Good evening, Anthony Fiore, 75 Chase. Questions for Mr. Ratz. Um, how are we doing on salts for the roads? I actually have a report oh. uh, later on in the okay. meeting. Should you should you want to wait for that? Potholes. Are the uh, DPW crews? I, I I know it's been a constant challenge this this winter. Uh, is that something that's that Mr. Bolivian's crew are uh, doing? Absolutely. They, between plowing and laying out salt, they are going out, and you have some of our fine DPW. Uh, uh, people here tonight, so between the salting, they are going out uh, and plowing. They are putting in the cold patch yeah. on potholes. Cold patch, as we all know, is not the most reliable of substance. They put it down properly, but then near the next thaw, you'll probably see some popping as well, too. Okay. So it's a short term. That's better than the holes. Quasi fix to try to. And just, just since you asked the question, sir, a lot of people are indicating that they're getting undulations in the roads. Uh, and those are frost heaves. We haven't had any frost heaves like this in a long time. So if you're running down some certain roads and you're thinking you're going over speed humps, those are frost heaves. Okay. When the when we've got four feet of 
freeze underneath the surface. When it thaws, those will go back down. Okay. Right. Which has created a lot of... I think we're seeing them on the frontage road where they just freeze them over the last year. What a, what a shame. They, they, they They'll go down. Yeah. They'll right. go down when it thaws. <laughs> all right, cool. That's all I mean, Those years in New England talking about. Thanks, Yeah, I wish you else in a public question to be heard. Please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Carl Panetta, resident of Roxbury. Um, I have a question first is, who designed and uh, characterized both of those uh, scrubbers or, or whatever you want, guys want to call it today? Who, who is the person who did that or company that designed that product? It's, uh, it's an existing product line. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I know Handex. I know Handex is the operator, Carl, but that, I can ask that The, the operator is one thing. Uh, what I'd like to know is who the manufacturer is, because when we find out who the manufacturer is, then we can go back to them and say, because you guys don't tell us or don't know, and some of the information we've been getting is not complete. So um, they should be able to tell us when the hydrogen sulfide is being scrubbed and it goes out, what comes out. That's part of when you design something and you put it into production and you have people buy it. And I'm surprised, no, I'm not surprised, that the DEP hasn't asked those questions. So that's real important. In fact, the new one, even more important. I mean, how can you put something in that doesn't have any, I mean, you go buy a car, you get a, you get a manual that talks all about the lights, the car, how, how they, uh, uh, the, um, the system for, uh, for, for navigation works. You just can't just throw <laughs> something up there unless you know. And I think that's important. And that leads me into my second question. I started to do some work on looking at the monitors. And those monitors are made by uh, Arizona Instruments. And the, they're a, a, a drone type um, um, uh, um, they're a drone type of, 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 of instrument. And what it is is the main box that's there is a 651, and the one that's inside is the one that does most of the work. That's a handheld. And it says right in the manual, it's a handheld. That's 631. 651 is the entire box. Well, what I'm concerned about is I went around, actually, I got a picture of one of the one of the sites. Um, this one, I don't know where that's located, but that's a site. Oh, that's Emmons Road, Carl. Oh, you guys are looking at this. Yeah, that's Emmons Road, too. Yeah. So, no, that's on the Ryder Road. Right? So if you, look, if you look at that picture, first of all, I'm not sure where that's located in respect to where the Fenimore dump is. That's one thing. The other thing is, if you look at the antenna or the, the, the monitoring piece, that's being blocked. In this manual, it says it should go high because it's a 360-degree thing. That's the other thing. The other thing is, these guys that keep telling us that um, it got to be grounded correctly, and they're on extension cords. Look at that picture based on what's in this manual. I don't know if they're grounded right. I don't think they are. And the one up in, I don't know where it is, over here uh, by the county where I live, at the lake, that's polluted over there. That's where the old swimming hole used to be. Riggs Pond. Yeah, look at that one. One, there's no antenna like it shows on there. There's a little one that's the, for, to send the data back and forth, and there's no grounding on it. So if that's the way we're doing things, and the manual says to do just the opposite. Now, I'm not making this up. It's in the manual that I picked it out, and it tells how to do it. And two's a trend. They did it wrong on two places. So that, to me, says right away there's a problem. And the other thing it says here, that's really important. It says, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, oh, I think this is it. Um, potential interferences. It says that there are a lot of other compounds that are present that can foul up these meters and you get wrong results. So we don't know what those are either. So I'm not so sure how good these results are. It might be a whole lot worse. And my last question is, the, 
the, well, that, I appreciate you sending me that message and getting back to me on, from the DEP. But my, but my concern is, they're saying, oh, the, the, we haven't gotten any complaints, which is wrong. There are lots of complaints. We also haven't gotten a lot of um, the, the, the results of the SO2 is very low. That's what they said. Well, let's try to go back in time a little bit. What do we all expect the SO2 levels to be when there is no dump, when the air is fresh and clean? What do we expect those to be? I think they should be zero. Now, maybe that's unreasonable, but I think they should be zero. Well, we're seeing all the time, 10, 15, 10, 10, 8. Some don't see anything. So, what's a long-term solution? It should be zero. There should be no hydrogen sulfide coming out of that up there. And then I asked them another question. We got, it sounds like we've got another cover, which is the snow. Where's the snow? Where, where's the SO2 coming out? He, he kind of told me, but it's not a significant answer. So what are we going to do about all these things? I mean, I don't know if you guys looked at this manual, but I can give it to you if you want. But I'm going to do what you say all the time, Mr. Ratz. It's on site. You can pick it right up, and you've got all the information you need on their website. So, I mean, I, I, how can you ignore, or the DEP ignore, this stuff? I think that you guys, you guys, because, and, I, and I, this goes to something you had said one time, or I heard, you don't want too many people contact the DEP. You only want one source of contact, we, we, we which I think that. is Mr. We, Rats, right? We never said that. Yes, you guys did. We You're too many people. We encourage you to talk contact DEP. You know, we, we want you to contact DEP. No, 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 no. You guys said, because there's too many people contacting too many people that you want to be. He may have said that. No, yeah. we didn't. In we fact, we took objection that. to that. Well, yeah. Uh, they wanted we, to we run don't everything want to by the mouthpiece yeah, for, right. for DEP. So. Well, 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 that's fine, and we can do that. But I personally think, with all the information I just have here, they're not going to listen to somebody like me. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Bob, Bill of Morocco, they will listen to. They'll listen to Bob Nadaros, maybe they'll listen to Bob Schultz. I don't know. But coming from you guys, our town council, speaking for us, really needs to go and talk to them based on, and this is not crap, I'm telling you what's here, and they're doing it wrong. So I'd like you guys to address all that stuff, just like Bob said about what he needs done. And the other one other thing, thank you very much for having the uh, health department get back to me. But you know, to be honest with you, Mr. Rax, what does the nurse do for me? I don't need the nurse. We need the, the department head to call and talk to us about the situation, not the nurse. Sure, I can do that. Thank you. You do what you need to do, but yeah. now I can leave this stuff for you because I'm going to go back and check to see if you guys go up there and do anything with any of those meters. You can because hold on to it. we got a problem. Thank you. Anybody else that have a wish to be here? Please raise your hand. Kathy Hart, Summit Lane, Sakasana. Um, in light of what Bob has said tonight, with the contamination that's proven um, from the landfill, I read something else online that said that there was proven contamination before this whole episode even started. Do you, are any of you aware of that? It was in that wolf notes? There's been ongoing monitoring of Drake's Brook and, and, the, and the pond by the Environmental Commission for many years. Well, I read an article, and maybe I misunderstood, but it seemed like it was saying that there was a level of contamination at Fenmore before this, so that this never should have been considered as a site for a solar farm. Well, what was the Did publication you, again? I think it was Wolf Notes. It okay. was, I read it online. We can look into that. You haven't read it? Uh, I don't have it. Because it says, no. um, you know, it, it, the whole point of it, unless I misunderstood, was that um, this never should have even been considered as a site proper for the solar farm. In light of that, I was wondering if you would give a commitment to ask for an investigation by the Department of Justice into this whole, because this is a whole huge mess now, and it seems like it was, um, you know, from the start, 
it just never should have happened. And well, so if we, you, we did not support that from the beginning. I no, have I know both notes opinions. Um, I'm not going to say whether I agree or disagree with him since I haven't read it, um, but I haven't always agreed with all of his opinions. Um, but I, well, I, think I believe it's we have to facts at. to back it up. So if you yeah, if you read the if you do read it and if you find it to be valid, would you be willing to contact the Department of Justice to investigate why this whole thing ever began? And maybe Mr. Bucko, you can be the one to answer that question. Well, yeah, it, it's it's been it, it's been down that road. Uh, you keep asking for it. We don't mind if there's an investigation done. Um, we've never objected to an investigation being done. Well, uh, there's I would, been calls I would for an investigation to be done uh, from state senators who have not, whether they made requests that it fell on deaf ears, or if it, um, or well, for whatever we, reason, didn't went away. I have no idea. Well, I would request a. Um, to go to the federal level, to the federal Department of Justice, because it is falling on deaf ears in the state. And while I wouldn't, you know, I would rather, I mean, you're saying you wouldn't object to one, but wouldn't you welcome one? Because this is our your town, you're the mayor. This is your, you know, this is a catastrophe in your town. 100%. And, and so how And we've how acted it that way from day one, long before you started getting involved. So we've been... We've yes. been concerned about this from the very beginning, and, and like have taken positions and trying to prevent this from happening. And then there was a, a somebody that came in, you know, history lesson. Fred likes to give the history lesson on what happened here. And this isn't, you know, you can't just start here. There's a lot of things that took place prior to that. Some involved DEP, some involves a developer that did things not according to what he was supposed to do. A lot of different things. So but if this I, there's a lot, of, a lot of litigation that both this township is in, as well as the DEP with the uh, SEP, the, the person that was bringing the materials in to the site. My point is that a lot of this is being done in the dark, and I think that you need to shine a light on it, and you need an, an open and thorough investigation so that people can understand exactly what happened. If there if there is criminal wrongdoing, that should be that should be exposed, and and if this was, I mean, it, already the Bernardi is a convicted felon, so he shouldn't have even had the contract to do this. So I think that I would hope that our elected officials would, rather than say you wouldn't object to it, that you would forcefully fight for it and be our representative. We've been forcefully fighting for it for the last three years. Is trying to make have you this asked for as federal the, involvement? May I finish? May I finish? I was allowed you to finish. Yeah. Um, what we fought for from day one is trying to make sure that our residents are, are and their health and well-being is at the top of the list, not finding out necessarily who it was. While if that is important, and we will probably get to that at some point in time, and I think the litigation will bring some of that out. Um, but I, right now, our concern has always been what's going to happen with the site, what can we get them to do, how can we make sure our residents are safe, whether it was trying to keep trucks off the road, or you know, gases out of people's houses and homes, uh, you know, children outside, we, that's all we've done. A lot of it we've done internally. A lot of it we've done as um, reactions to what you brought to our attention from day one. Well, in relation to that, then I would ask that you would at least um, contact the EPA, as Bob had suggested, because you need. I believe the DEP is not Which acting in have. our best interest. We have, had, we have contacted them on multiple occasions, and they defer to the DEP each Well, and just time. now, we're, now we're experiencing the water contamination. I think that's why I, I think said that it's like a it's a it's a um, fluid situation, and so when new information becomes available, I think it has to be again brought to the and attention. That's why I said, Mr. Medeiros, we'll look at that, and then it's a new round. We'll take a look at that. Okay, so and then you. just Mr. Bucko, do you have any environmental law expertise? Yes, I work on. I actually work on the. Um, on the uh, Ringweed landfill um, that was closed uh, in Porsippa many years ago. So do you, and what I worked on the fill, I worked on the cone fill litigation. And that's now, I just closed. read that that, and it's also now contaminating the groundwater, I just read. Yeah. The there, there's been a report that there's been a groundwell contamination up there, you are correct. Right. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, would anybody else in the public wish to be heard? Yes, Ms. Jan. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Brenda Sherwood, Suckers on the Univerg um, If you were not backing up the dump being touched back a few years ago, are you, do you still hold that position that you think that this is wrong, what's been going on, that you're not backing up everything that's going on up there? What, what do you mean backing you up? You just said that you, you, you all were against what, you know, when they wanted to come in. Yeah, and this, was a plan, this was a plan that was not put together with approval of or initially mm -hmm. even knowledge of anyone on this council. Okay. Period. Okay. You're so, on the highlands, aren't you? You knew about it. No, I didn't actually. I just got on. Eileen Swan did not mention it to me because it is a conflict of interest. And mm -hmm. she's the one that approved it, unlike a lot of the things people write. Facts are facts. They're there. And they're Fact these are on the committee. So um, with everything that's going on now, would you say you're, you're saying you're more on the side of the community as opposed to on the side of um, We're on pro the side what the DEP is doing? We're in its entirety, yes. Okay. Then I respectfully request backing up Bob Madero's that you have the Raritan headwaters in here, whether you need to review reports or whatnot. I think if you want to back up the public, like you say, you've done things that the public has requested that we've brought to your to light to you, that I think no matter what any reports say or not, I think you should have the Raritan headwaters in here. So you can all be fully aware from them who did the actual testing and are, have knowledge in that area and can report to you on that for our behalf and your behalf also. You live here also. Yep. Okay. And um, also, um, in regards to the severe potholes, maybe um, for potholes that are dangerous, because I know sometimes people try and swerve to miss them so they don't blow you see a tire. Them right can Tell I, us can right I just right. finish, yes. please? If there's any that you anyone sees the, DE, the Department of Public Works see that maybe can't get taken care of right away maybe do what they do sometimes when there's bicycle events and put some spray paint around them to warn people ahead of time so they're not swerving last minute and then scaring the person coming at them in the next lane or actually hitting something that they could have avoided and still stayed in their lane and not have um, an accident because of them blowing a tire out and door denting a rim We'll take that into consideration. Thank you. Okay. Uh, but please, let us know right away if you see potholes. We don't always see them right away. Um, and, you, and you can go online. We have a service request area. There's I think some of you have used it. And you can go right on that service request. It'll go the very next day to the Public Works Department. I have, okay. call, I have called in. I didn't know there was something online. But I have called in prior a couple of years ago when there was actually the sunken dip in the road that you really can't see. My husband rides a motorcycle, and it was at the end of our at the end of Condit, and it was dangerous for motorcycles, especially. Thank you. And uh, that was taken care of very quickly. Thank you. Great. Uh, yeah, a lot of people assume that it has been uh, relayed to us, uh, much like a power outage. Everybody thinks their neighbor called uh, too often. It doesn't get called in, and our road department is uh, pretty good at trying to get to it as quickly as possible. So. <coughs> The last time you were, maybe the last time, the time before we were here, and you were bringing up the issues on your road, I just like to let you know I did a ride down there, so I wanted to see what it was like. And yeah, it was justified calling the party. Are you talking about the um, the spots you pointed out that were bad? Yeah. The spots that were bad on my road? Oh, I've got a or the traffic, the speeding? I'm sorry. No. We, the, the road, the condition of the road. The condition of the road. After you were oh, okay. Things, I said, Look, I want to take a ride well, also, in that. regards to the speeding, they put a box up and a cop was sitting out there and he was in the black detective car or whatever. And I went out for a jog and I was speaking to him and he mon was monitoring the traffic. And he said, as I was standing on the shoulder of my road, speaking to him off on the very shoulder, a car coming, a truck coming down in the lane I was standing off to the side of was doing 50 in a 30 mile an hour lane yeah. while, while a detective's car was sitting there. We listen to that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard? Please raise your hand. Yeah, let me talk briefly about the uh, Raritan Headwards, the RHA. Um, they did their initial test in 12. They did another test in 13. And then they uh, did another test in 14. Each year they come up with a number that reflects the uh, bug life, and they call it macro. 
Okay, so it is an indicator of what may be going on in the stream. Each year it was based, the, the number was 18 each year. So it hasn't gotten better and it hasn't gotten worse. All right, according to Bill Kimber, they rate that moderately impacted. All right, um, he does state that he thinks it comes from Fenimore. That was his opinion. He could not tell us if it was from the old part, was from the new part. He couldn't tell if it was due to the trees being cut down. He could not specifically say where that came from. He did make recommendations. And the biggest recommendation, I, well, I came out with two recommendations. Uh, the first one would be to get an additional test site further upstream. Okay? And they were going to try to do that this year. The second one would be to test... Rarity? Sorry? Rarity was going to do that? Okay. Sorry. The second one uh, would be to test the soil samples on both sides of the banks. Uh, and he explained it like this. And Harvey Klein uh, backed it up. Um, Harvey Klein, for anybody listening, is the guy with the water testing company. Garden State. State. He's one of yeah. the preeminent water people in the state. Yeah. Uh, basically, um, if it's in the water, it's going to dissipate sooner or later. Uh, where you're going to find any issues is going to be in the soil surrounding on the banks. All right. So um, Bill Kimber recommended to uh, the Environmental Commission that one of the things they should be considering okay, is taking soil samples. So the Raritans test in the water but not the soil? Correct. They don't, they don't, the Raritan only test the water. They do not test the soil. Can I point out that I believe it was two years ago and these are on our website as well too. We did test the sediment. It was in the Ledgewood Basin Pond. I don't mean to be rude, please, but that's not true. Please, we did check the Please. Them. Well, he got a total right. Please. Then your opportunity. I'm sorry, Mr. Rouse, continue. I'm sorry. Not through this process, but earlier back, I believe it was 13 or 13, we tested the sediment in the pond as well. So that's on our website as well. We did not do the stream bed, so. All right. Uh, in, in further talking to uh, Harvey, uh, there are a number of things, the, the list being too great of things to look for, um, as far as what could be possibly coming out of an old landfill. Uh, he suggested doing a barrier test of the most common pollutants associated with the landfill and working our way backwards. All right, I had a conversation with Mr. Raths and Mayor Riley uh, the next day, and I gave that opinion to them that we should be doing that those testing. All right, so um, that's basically what I came away with on that report. Uh, and I members of the public, let me finish, Mr. Raths. Yeah. Uh, members of the public asked if he should uh, could speak to the to the council. That is not my decision. Uh, I found his report uh, his report to be informative. Um, so it's up to council if they uh, wish to have this guy here and listen to his report. Okay, that's it for me, Mr. Uh, yes, and I think we were going to see if DEP was planning on these tests. Um, well, water tests we know they're doing. How far down the stream, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to do the soil the banks or any soil testing, not, not on site, on the stream itself. I, I don't, they're doing groundwater, so I'm, they're going to go into their, they're going into their wells that they have, so I don't, I will check with them about any sampling on the, uh, of the streams themselves. I think that the last I heard is, is that it probably would behoove us to get the results of the DP groundwater testing before we determine what uh, what uh, could be tested through the sediment. And that's what Harvey recommended. That's what Harvey Klein recommended. Okay, so we get those results. <coughs> water, that's right, I remember this. Get the water samples and then do, then. Then that'll give us the battery of what we should be testing for. Yeah. So we will be moving forward with that. <laughs> Great, anything else, Mr. Schmidt? I'm good. Thank you. Mr. DeFilippo. Uh, just briefly, um, Mr. Mayor, I think as, um, I discussed with members all week. We have two um, people who are um, uh, we're proposing for trustee positions for the library: uh, Janice Stigler from um, Ledgewood, and Jeanette Carey uh, 
uh, 42 St. Mary's Drive. So um, that would complete the, uh, the library board. And I uh, want to thank uh, Councilman Schmidt for his help in putting that together. Sure. Well, those are mayoral appointments. So at this point in time, Ms. Reed, I'll appoint uh, Jeanette Carey and Janice Stigler to the Library Board of Trustees. So if you could contact them tomorrow, and uh, I'm sure Bob can work out with you any information so they can get up to speed on the next meeting at 7. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. DeFlippo? No, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harris? Yeah, two things, Mr. Mayor. I don't know about uh, statement. Last night I attended the Board of Education meeting, and uh, a couple of things. They uh, did introduce their uh, new business administrator, and uh, she'll be taking over uh, from the interim business administrator. She was present last night at the meeting. Uh, there was a presentation by the uh, VFW to uh, three students at the uh, Lincoln Roosevelt and three students at Eisenhower. This was based on papers they did uh, about the VFW, the VFW members, and uh, what it was to be an American. And uh, there was a first, second, and third place in each of these categories. So it was a real nice ceremony. Each one got up and they got and they got to read their uh, paper. And parents way up got to their full house last night, which is unusual. Uh, also, the uh, principal, <coughs> excuse me, the principal of Eisenhower Middle School. Uh, put on a uh, PowerPoint uh, presentation on how he is changing the classroom structure, how he's, he plans on teaching the various courses this year, and uh, what he's looking for is to get as much time as he can with a student in a particular subject, as opposed to every 35 minutes moving up from point A to point B to point C, which apparently is not, <coughs> is not effective as far as learning. They just don't have enough time. So they're increasing some of these periods and they're moving around. Uh, that's all I had on the Board of Education. Uh, I did last week uh, attend the meeting uh, and dinner at the Morris County League of Municipalities. And a couple things. Uh, our county clerk uh, is going to be taking on the road, this may have happened again, a veteran ID program where you'd be able to go to, uh, to various locations and uh, get, uh, get an ID card. She's also proposing uh, as an example, at the County College of Morris, being able to get passport. Instead of having to go to Morristown and have one or two nights a week if you work and go there, you'd be able to go to other locations in the county and uh, get a passport. There was also, uh, and I gave this all the council, was a uh, small newsletter from the league, and uh, And one of the things they brought up is uh, giving a little summary on each of these is transportation funding. As you know, uh, it's been cut down substantially, and the lobbying to get that back in and uh, increased. So uh, as an example, your road, Mrs. Isherwood, we could get some funds for it. Uh, they also brought up pension and health benefit studies, uh, co-op, affordable housing, uh, business personal property tax losses, and uh, state diversion of energy tax receipts uh, for property tax relief funding. So these are some of the things that they're not. It's a worthwhile meeting to go to and get to see what's being done on the county level and on the state level. And if we are also updated regularly from these entities, the times are big. But it's nice to have a present presence there, and they do recognize that we attend it. And that's all I have tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'm yes, sorry. Um, <clears throat> to come back, uh, I, I should have mentioned um, I, I want to also bring to the attention of, of the council and the people in the audience that um, Cephas Bowles uh, passed away on a Saturday. He's the, he's the husband of Linda Bowles, who's an assistant principal at Roxbury High School, but was also the uh, CEO of WBGO, the public radio station in Newark. And very sad, very sudden, and, uh, uh, and a tremendous loss, I think, for the community. Another right. thing, uh, this Thursday night there is another economic development committee meeting at 7 o'clock at the town hall right Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bucco? Um, just two things. Uh, not necessarily in, uh, in regard to various items affecting the legal aspect of the township, but um, today the governor gave his budget address and uh, municipal funding will be 
flat, so you'll uh, receive the same amount as you did last year. You're not going to lose any. And uh, education funding is going to increase slightly. So uh, I think that's uh, good news because the financial situation is a little tough. But uh, right now, the plan is to try to keep everybody stable. Mr. Reed? Mr. Ratz? I've got a few things. It's winter. I know. I, 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 yeah, I will try to get to them as, uh, as quickly as I can. First is salt. And, well, first I want to acknowledge that we are well represented here by our DPW tonight, and I want to thank you guys for coming out. Uh, as you guys probably know, they have been uh, very busy this year. Uh, so I appreciate it. I'm sure the residents do as well, too. So thank you guys very much. And, and before you leave, just give them the addresses for the potholes and they'll get right out. So. <laughs> but in regards to salt, we, like a lot, lot of other communities, uh, got into an issue in, in regards to the delivery of salt. If you recall last year, it was the availability of salt. This year is the delivery of salt. Um, we ran a deficit, which we are now addressing with Morris County. And um, Paul, I want to thank you for your, for your work on this. Uh, Paul Bell's here. But right now we're getting uh, 230 tons a day delivered to the, uh, the county's facility uh, in Wharton. And we're going to get that for the next uh, five days. They're coming in, but I believe they're going to carry over to the next week as well, too, for five more days until we're made whole. We're 2,200 tons in their 2,200 tons in, in arrears and delivery. So I, I want to thank Paul for you know staying on top of that. Rick Blood as well. We're, we're open when, by Wednesday or Thursday of next week that that'll be whole be, be whole again. Hopefully, yes. Grateful. I'm in contact with them every morning, make sure that they're sending what they're supposed to be sending us. And, uh, Hopefully by next week we'll be we'll be. And I pointed out to Mr. Rath, uh, I kept copy counsel and, and Mr. Blood on on Sunday that you know if any additional phone calls from, okay. from us, you know may help. Certainly uh, reach out before we're at the end. We will most certainly do that. Uh, the other one is frozen pipes. Uh, the like I had said earlier, we have ground. The ground is frozen up to four feet deep in a lot of areas. So right now. We have about 20 residents who have either frozen pipes on our side of the service or they're on the uh, homeowner side as well too. So they're going through some of them as many as three or four days without water. We have offered some of a bottle of water uh, in circumstances. What we do is we try to do the repairs ourselves. We will also bring in a, a welder to uh, heat the lines up and move and, uh, and uh, free, free up <coughs> in a safe manner. Uh, a supervised welder, and uh, to uh, unfreeze the lines. So they've been really busy in the water department as well too. Today, I understood today that we didn't get any new frozen lines, so that might that might be a good thing. If you're concerned about it, you may want to just leave your faucets running, but it's not a general recommendation. Okay. Um, winter parking enforcement. Uh, first of all. I want to thank the police department for really enforcing our, our parking bans. However, prior to enforcing the parking bans, we sent out a, uh, we had Facebook postings, we had a, we posted on our website, and we sent out, I believe it was two alerts to the residents uh, asking them to move their cars off the street. Well, you will be, as you probably have, or you may, be have, may have in the very near future, you will get calls from residents who did not pull their vehicles off the streets and got tickets. Um, if that's the case, then I forwarded an email from the uh, police chief today to mayor and council. Then once the ticket is issued, they can come to court and they can appeal to the judge. That's what we have a judge for. So we're treating everybody uniformly. I understand from Rick and Paul that this was probably some of the best, uh, you know, because of the enforcement that we had some of the most, you know, the better and most safe and effective plowing that we've had in a long time. So. It's getting better. It's, you know, it's still there, but it's much better than what it's been in year past. Years yeah. past. So uh, those are the um, those are the things I have on. on. 
on that. Also, just a quick update on the Ledgewood Mall. I spoke to the owner of the Ledgewood, the owner's representative of Ledgewood Mall today. The they have, owner, just the actual owner? This is the actual the owner. owner. Yeah, this is the new owner. They have cleared their first court hurdle. As you know, the previous owner took them to court, but I understand now that they're appealing, the previous owner is appealing that decision now as well, too. So they're more hopeful in regards to closing on that with their potential buyer very soon. So. Uh, and then one last thing is I got a call from our uh, freehold director uh, right before the meeting. The uh, VFW parking lot, that project will be reimbursed. Uh, from the county. That was a CBDG grant that we received. The county will be reimbursing us from that. The 2014 grant, though, is not going to be approved, uh, but there are going to come back with some hints or some instructions on possibly going forward on the 2015 model. So but they're paying for the they're paying for the drive uh, the parking area, but they're we're not going to get the 2014 grant. Can I just put it in the state? Is that official now? Or? That's official. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's as of 6.30 uh, tonight. All right. As far as the other grants, uh, if they still require the information they were seeking, we cannot give them that, so. I don't know, Bob. I'll have to follow up on that. Okay. Just, this is what I got for tonight, sir. Can I speak on that? Please. Th those grants are gone, Bob. They're gone. Uh, okay. Yeah. They, they, they had an issue at their end, and those grants are no longer eligible to places like the VFW and American Legions and places like that. Yeah. But there are other programs that we're, we're waiting to find out what they are. We'll get them to you. Yeah. I'm disappointed. I thought, I thought we were pretty, pretty sure to get that. Uh, um, so. yeah. they're, gonna, they're gonna suggest what it would take for VFWs to, yeah. be, that's what <coughs> to be eligible. <coughs> so, so we'll proceed with those. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I'll report it back to the VFW. That's it. That's it. Uh, the only thing I had uh, besides what's already been covered is uh, just a reminder. I think we still need some Lake Muskegon on regional planning board members. Yeah. Uh, work on it. Uh, they've asked to get the, the volunteers from Roxbury over there. All right. That brings us to matters uh, requested. Referred by council members, manager, attorney, or clerk. Application for special permit, Temple Shalom Brotherhood. Can I move that, please? You may. You did. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Okay. None. Roll call, please. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. Pippa. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mayor Riley. Yes. It brings us to introduction of proposed ordinances. We have none. A hearing and adoption uh, of ordinances on second reading. 01-15 calendar year 2015 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a capped bank. Can I get a motion to open to the public? So moved. Sir. All in favor? Uh, Chris, real quick, explain this for the public. Okay, uh, every year the state requires us to pass this ordinance should we ever want to uh, go over our cap, which is our, is our levy cap. Just to let you know, the Roxbury Township is $2 million under our levy cap, so it's not an issue within the municipality. That said, if we were to have an emergent issue that we had to address, this would allow us to do it. Thank you. Uh, would anybody in the public wish to be heard on Ordinance 01-15 only? Yes, sir. Just a question. Yes. Can you give us a question? Have we ever had to exceed that cap in the past? Never. Uh, even Never. Sandy or Irene? All right. Um, nice job, Mr. Rice. Well, we try. Uh, no, we, we never have. And then after two years, that those, what's been no done is there. Into our general fund. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else in the public wish to be heard on this? Seeing none, roll call, please. Uh, I'm sorry, we need a motion, motion to close. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Motion to adopt? I'll make that motion, sir. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? See a non roll call, please. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. DeFilippo. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mayor Riley. Yes. <coughs> ordinance 02 15, capital ordinance to authorize the making of various public improvements and the acquisition of new, additional, or replacement equipment and machinery, new information technology equipment, 
and new automotive vehicles and a new ambulance, including original apparatus and equipment, in, by, and for the Township of Roxbury and the County of, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, and to appropriate the sum of $2,947 from a contribution from the Roxbury Public Library, a state grant, capital surplus, and the capital improvement fund to pay the cost thereof. Move to open to the public. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is our capital ordinance that we have to pass every year. Actually, we have to go through this process, but we're pay as you go. We cash. So uh, we're in a pretty good position the last couple of years, and mm -hmm. we hope to, hope to be able to increase our road. Uh, well, the, this goes in projects because of it. This increases our, road, our commitment to the roads by approximately 20% this year. Yeah. Uh, keep, keep working on that. Uh, would anybody in the public wish to be heard on 02-15? Please raise your hand. Seeing none, a motion to close, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt. Second. A motion to second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Barnes? Yes. Mr. DeFilippo? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mayor Riley? Yes. Uh, next item up is introduction and adoption of resolutions. Are we calling any, Mr. Mayor? Uh, well, I'm going to bring one up, but you can put it into the... Uh, All right, so I move 2015-67, uh, includes 63, 64, 68, uh, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 2015 07 06, 07 07 and that's it. Get a second, please. Second. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, and no hands. Mr. Bucco, uh, for uh, Zelly and uh, Emilcott, uh, why are these amounts so high at this stage of the game instead of just doing it more frequently? So there's a Well, I, I think it was just the administration was positioned to do a contract for the entire year. position was just as we've done in the past is we <coughs> do it uh, for the year now it's council's leisure if you want to move it if you want to you want to cut the number in half and make it for cut six it months? you want to cut the number in half we can do that i would if council doesn't mind i don't mind that one uh, okay so uh, 2015 which is page 10 will be amended to read ninety thousand dollars and 2015-064, which is page 13, would read $180,000. Uh, the 180 is for Hamilcott, the 90 is for Mr. Zelly and his firm. Any other comments on any of the other resolutions? I will be abstaining on 2015-069. Uh, yeah, it's a simple majority. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Barnes. Yes. Mr. DeFilippo. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mayor Riley. Yes, I accept for the one recusal. Yes. That takes us to personnel changes, which are none. Takes us to our communication package of. Uh, February 20th, we do have something. Uh, please everybody save uh, number three for your next budget meeting. Can, can I ask a question about the uh, nutrition site? Yes. That's been like this for a few meetings. Have we gotten prices on those repairs yet? No, we don't have prices on the repairs. Uh, we have to get somebody out to the roof once it falls, 
so they can come back and do repairs. What is the scope of that? Is it the roof is bad or? Well, the entire roof is going to need to be replaced shortly, but for right now, we're looking at just getting the repairs done. So okay. Mr. Blood is going to, once he gets that, he'll compare both of them and we'll figure out where we go. Is there damage ongoing? He, I've been told there's not. Okay. Uh, I see a draft resolution for the Lake, Lake Attack on uh, Streetscaping Committee. <coughs> My information update. Yes. What's your intent here? Well, this is similar to what we were talking about, or what we did with the uh, Main Street. And as you're aware, I think Main Street was very successful in not only getting raising funds uh, with grants. They raised uh, over, over $350,000 for the improvements. But also they put together a vision which came to council, council accepted. They then used the, they then took that vision to the planning department and the planning department brought it to the planning board and the planning board accepted that as the design elements for the improvements in that area. We have a lot of interested parties in what's going on in the landing area and I think this gives us an opportunity to bring focus with all of those parties with the uh, input in the direction of uh, mayor and council as to how that proceeds in our, com in our community. I, I, I agree except for one aspect. I think there's a redevelopment aspect that's not on Main Street um, that could have larger ramifications, um, mm -hmm. residential or other type things. So I don't know if I would send that aspect off to it. Uh, I would not. I think the scope is fairly narrow. And it, I think the scope is fairly narrow in its, in its description. If you have any comments about the scope itself, and narrowing it because that would not be my intent. It would be just the design, the attributes, and the, and the treatment of the, say, gateway. It would have nothing to do with any the redevelopment of the area. That's a planning board authority. Is it the council's uh, intent to uh, I've got to do some work on it. Yeah. Well, I think it's. I think we probably hold another meeting, so uh, there's three council members that aren't here. Give them a chance to see it. They just got it over the weekend, and uh, I would like to look at the scope. Then, if that's the you know have a better understanding of the intent. Yeah, that was never the intent. Was to get into. What the intent no. was not to get into redevelopment. Simply similar to the similar to uh, Main Street is to deal with the design and the appearance of the area. Yeah, because I know the actual physical road design, working with the county, mm -hmm. we talked about that at the planning board as well. And that comes back to council as well, too. So you have a lot of parties involved. Okay. So we'll hold this, Tony. Uh, I have a feeling we'll move down in some direction if you wanted to start working on it, but I don't think it's okay. necessary right away. Uh, I don't think there's a rush on this, right, Chris? No. Yeah, no. It's no rush. Um, uh, in light of that, number three of the communication package is the, uh, I'm sorry, four, is the county's working on their uh, circulation element, which we also just spoke about at the planning board meeting, or at our master plan meeting uh, last week. And uh, I think, has Russell been brought up, copied on this? I couldn't tell by the memo. Uh, number three? Four, 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 four is a uh, circulation element for Morris County Planning. Morris County Planning Board. I'm sorry, five, five, five. Let me take my glasses off. Again. Yeah, I have. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, there was a four, 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 plan element and we might be able to dovetail with our crisscross of county roads. If, if it has not already over had an impact on, you know, the, this is where we address certain roads like hillside and things like that years ago. So I, I think if there's anything that needs to be readdressed at the county level and dovetail it in with what we're doing to, you know, we can't send trucks down the road to nowhere, et cetera. So there's planning element aspects that I think are important to take a look at. I'll get it over to Russell. Thank you. Anything else on communications? Well, I have a long, long a laundry list, but uh, Mr. Rath and uh, Lisa were able to answer all my questions. Yeah, I wasn't going to go through that. That's why I say let's hold that no, no, for fine. the budget meeting. No, I'm fine. Thank you. All right. Good.
with uh, communications that will now take us to the public portion. And anybody in the public? Bob Medeiros, 4 Maryland Drive, Ledman, New Jersey. Um, I just want to elaborate a little on the uh, Ryington headquarters testing, which I went for a uh, test program, I qualified, and I was part of the testing group. First, by moderately impaired statement, it's, it's, it's quite all right if it was downstream somewhere. But to, to score 18 at the headwaters, where it's starting to come, that's horrendous. It should have been 30. And down the stream somewhere, 18 would have been moderately impaired. So I wanted to clear that up. Second, the way we test, we test for life in the water, in the soil. So we look for micros. They're none. Something's killing them. The water is killing the micros. That's why it's 18. They can only find a particular type of micros in, in there. Third, the soil testing. The soil testing needs to be done further up the stream. And there is one way to prove that the water and the soil and the life is being killed by the landfill. There's, a, there's two streams coming across. Actually a third, but nobody believes the third. The one on top of the hill is a higher than the landfill. And I suggested to the Ryton headquarters to test the water above the landfill. If that measures dirty, then we know for sure that what's killing the life is at the bottom of the stream, which is coming from the landfill. I just wanted to clear that up, but the scientists will prove prove it better. Go to I just have a question. Eight. Sure. What is the range in the numbering? You said 30, but I'm assuming 30 is the 30, highest, that's the best? 30 is one of the highest, I believe it goes up to 35. I think it's 32 no, it's or 36, something like that. 35. It's 30. Is, the, the 30 zero. is the highest. 30 is the highest. 30 is the highest. I think it's 36. No, no, it's not 36. I've been on the Environmental please, Commission please, for three please. years. It's, been, it's okay. 30. If you got a 30, you're doing good. If you got an 18, you got no life. It's dead. No, 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 no. It's the portion of life that we seek to attain 30 is dead. The portion zero. of life that's there. Right, I'm not going to get into this. The but zero course. is dead. The what? Zero is dead. Zero is dead. 18 is moderately impaired. And that's all it is. Not at the head, the top of the water stream. The top of the water stream. I can see 18 down here, but not up here. The life that is supposed to sustain Mr. is dead. Mr. Kimber didn't say that. That's why I have, have him come. He's a scientist. I'm only a student. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Anybody else in Paul push here? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Brenda Usher with Unibird, Sekasona. Um, I'll just follow up from that. Um, let's just have the Raritan Headwaters Association here and we can clear this all up. We can hear it from the horse's mouth, the expert in that. But it is um, unprecedented to have headwaters impaired, to have headwaters be in 18. So what Bob is saying is yes, test above the landfill and test below it and that's just pure. Any, any simpleton can figure that out. So maybe we could be simple and simply do it. Um, and the macroinvertebrates show the health of a stream. My husband is a fly fisherman and tying his own flies and knows all about what flies the fish eat at what times in the season. Um, if you don't have bugs, you don't have life for a reason. Um, also by cutting down the trees, you warm the water and then you don't have your natural trout reproduction also. Um, so then moving on to um, the resolutions of 2015, 063 and 064. Um, Mayor Riley, you're saying that 90,000 for Zelly and 180,000 for Emilcott, that is the reduction for six months each? No, what, what the proposal was that was presented for this evening was, uh, bear with me one second so mm -hmm. I get the amounts, I believe it was 100 for Zelly? I wrote it down, you said 90, but okay. Okay, 
Uh, what I, that was for the year. That was for the year, not for the reduced six months. Correct. So nine. Well, all we do, we didn't cut this. The, the only part, the only amendment to the contract mm -hmm. wasn't was that instead of the whole year, I cut it in half and said six months. So we could have some accountability. Six months for with, what? We're going to look at it again. For, 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 the, for, the, for the contract. For, and we'll cut, yes. But contract. the price that you gave is for the 12 months. No. The, the original price that was in here was for 12 months. It so, got cut in half for six months. So what's the six month price? Uh, exactly half. Hold up. It was 180 to 90. Okay. So he said for 90000 for Zelly, 180000 for Amalcop. I wrote it down as he said it. Yes. But if that's incorrect, no, 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 please restate, restate it. Please restate it. For a one year contract for Mr. Zelly, it was originally 180000 for one year. Okay. It's going to be a six month contract at 90000 Right. So then what's the 180 for Amalcop? The Amalcop was originally a one year contract at 360000 Okay. So then it's correct. 90000 for six months and 180000 for six months. Okay. Then that's clear now. Thank you. Can I be your expert? <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah. one last thing. I'll join you. One last thing, uh, Mr. Behrens. I think there's been some confusion about my comment about Unibird when the um, budget meeting was here and I got up and spoke when I heard that there was special funds separate from the right. townwide funds. I do not in any form, manner, or wish want Unibird paved. The last time our section of Unibird was paved, about 10 or 15 years ago, it became a drag strip, worse than it is now. I like my road bumpy. I like it a mess because as it is, you can see, as it is, you can see with the, the policeman sitting right there in an unmarked car and a pedestrian standing on the side of the road, a pickup truck comes down doing 20 miles an hour over the speed limit. And that didn't even seem that fast to me, and that's really the sad part. Why can was it just to let you know that you listen? That was it. I don't want it paved. My concern was that it was going to be paved, and we do not, nor does my husband want it paved, because my husband has it, gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to work, and he has a big issue about cars racing down the street in the 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the morning with loud music and loud mufflers. So... In no way, shape, or form do we want Unibird paid. That's my request. Yeah. We want the speeding taken care of. And, and, and in, fact, in, fact, the police, in fact, the police officer also told me that um, there had been a DWI on my road and the guy was doing 65. Once you're drinking, you don't know what they're doing. Uh, but but the police have done the survey. And they have not gotten back to me. And as of this uh, okay. Monday, the chief said he would have somebody be, uh, well, been Well, he tried. He left me a message. I called Correct. him back. He's okay. not gotten back to me. Yes. I'm waiting to hear what he's he He's tried to get back to you, but he hasn't been able to reach you. Okay. okay. I, I don't have a missed call, but okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, uh, That's Bob Schultz again. Um, what to test for in the soil, you can go back to the old EEP reports um, and what was in the old landfill if you're looking for something to go test. There was uh, 1,560 barrels or however many of 55 gallon drums buried in that landfill. That's a proven fact that's documented by the NJDEP. Um, that stuff's in there, so you can certainly go and, and go ahead and uh, tests for those different chemicals. There's uh, stuff from Revlon there, there's stuff from various other places, and I would also suggest that you test for what the DEP is testing for at Combefield North, because I would suspect that the same stuff that was dumped there was dumped at Fenimore at that same time, because Combefield South and Combefield North had the same stuff in it. And that was just years apart that they actually found it. As for the Raritan Headwaters Association, um, that's scored from 0 to 30, um, 30 being the highest, and you would expect a 28 or higher in this region, which is the headwaters of the Raritan River. Um, scoring an 18, moderately impaired, certainly the stream is not dead, but it's certainly not where it should be. And the direct cause is, is the Fenimore landfill. landfill from what uh, Bill Kibler is saying. Uh, he's been saying this for three years now. Old and new. 
Excuse me? Hold it. I can't tell you what it is or what it isn't. Um, I can tell you that from what they say, you know, the cause is the Fenimore landfill and what's going on there. Um, and I brought that up to the Environmental Commission over the two years before I was let go from the Environmental Commission, and nothing was ever done. And something needs to be done. The water needs to be checked coming out of there, including the soil. So it gives you some clues on where you can go with the head and test. Um, why aren't the Environmental Commission meeting minutes online anymore? And, or the dates of the meetings? We can look at I present aware of it, so... All that I, hasn't happened. I don't know if there's meetings, uh, meeting minutes that take place, or did they ever? Yeah, we haven't, and uh, we've more been updates. having a problem with uh, getting them online. Well, that, that, would, that would be now 14 months, which is exactly the time I was let go from the Environmental Commission. Because that stuff was all online before that. The website was taken down, uh, the meeting minutes were removed, uh, the meeting times were removed, the email address to the Environmental Commission was removed, and nothing is online to get in touch with anybody. We'll, we'll check on it, but it, it's a commission, so we go through our administration anyway for a contact. But, um, yeah, I believe all the contact information is, is on the website. 2014, it might be. I'm a Bob, okay. uh, you know when you set that page up, you set it up under your personal domain. All right, we had it. I wasn't going to bring that up, but go ahead. Well, it wasn't my personal domain. It well, was yeah, one that was that the commission approved of, and was, I was very... You were the sole gatekeeper. Let me talk, please. You were the sole gatekeeper for that thing. Correct. Um, what they, the talks between council members and the manager is that we wanted to change everything over to another domain holder. Right. Okay? That was done. I think everything is on that site. The, me the meeting minutes, I thought, were being posted. We'll check. We'll check. We'll check. We'll check. It's as simple as that. We'll take care of it. The EC's website is still on the township's website now. That's where, If you click on the EC's website, like the link from your page, the township's webpage. I had to get to it. Okay. And that's it. And RoxburyEC.org should have been transferred over to you guys. Um, and that was a year and a half ago. Well, there's a, apparently a link on our site, so we'll look into it. Thanks, Bob. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard on any issues? Please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Carl Panetta, I guess everybody knows who I am. Um, I'd like to go back and ask the council to have a resolution to have the... the, the Bill Kibler. Bill Kibler come and speak to you guys and speak to the DEP if you can get them here too. Because, sorry, I don't mean to be rude or disrespectful, but you're making too much light of what the findings are there. Bill Kibler, you neglected to tell him, and I'm surprised you, Mr. Mayor, you got the same information at the, uh, at the uh, Highlands Commission. But 1.5 million people are drinking polluted water coming from there. So, there's more to it than just saying moderate. And he, he sat right there and he said, moderate, don't make light of that. Just because it says moderate, it's not moderate. It's a problem. And he said it about five times. And you stood right, sat right there and listened to him. So, and I'm really surprised that you didn't give this counsel, because that happened, what, two weeks ago? More information on it. And I'm surprised that you, Mr. Mayor, you got the stuff from the Highlands Council. First of all, it was a presentation to the Highlands Council at a public meeting, and I didn't have any data in advance. So now, I'm not saying in advance. When he came, <laughs> you weren't in the room, but you got the slides. I'm sure you did. If you didn't, then, then there's something wrong. So I'd like to, the council to make a resolution to have that happen. And just for, for your knowledge, even though he's not saying anything, I spoke to Mr. Schmidt, and he was concerned based upon the information that he collected from that meeting. So where it goes from there still has to be looked at. I don't have all the details. He was talking to... That's why I'm asking you... Can, can, I, can I finish, please? Yeah. Uh, I don't have all the details yet. Did you want to say something, Mr. Schmidt? Yeah. Uh, my report tonight was just the facts. I didn't narrate it like Mr. Kimball does. I, while I have a personal opinion, what I gave the council tonight was what I took out of that meeting is a fact. And you know what? Okay. I'm sorry, sir, but you didn't have all the facts. Uh, quite frankly, okay. I, I, I was with Bob. That's enough. That's enough. Talking, please. I don't care if you're talking. I was with Bob, and we did that test. 
That insult me, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. I'll be quiet. Go ahead. You can answer. No, we, don't, we don't need to. We're fine. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, I'd like to have that resolution. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, how about the questions about um, what, what we're doing with the stack and the new stack? I, you know what? I'll put it in a form of an email and I'll send it to you. That's appreciated. And, and I'll send this it lady you. over here asked about why we can't take this to the next level, which is the federal. We, we have. We, we, wait, 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 wait please answer okay. my question. Why can't we? We have. It's not answering my question. Because there is no answer to your question. Well, I'm never happy with the answer. Why haven't we taken it to the higher level? We have. We have approached the EPA on multiple occasions. Like the lady said, the federal level. That's the EPA yeah. is the federal level. Okay. You can't go higher than that? The EPA won't God. come because the, DPA, the EPA won't ask them. The DEP, I mean. The DEP says, no, I don't want you. Don't get mad, Mr. Mayor. Tell me the answer. No. You can't or you don't want. Anything else? You didn't answer my question, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions? Yeah, I had that question on the table. I had that question on the table. Please Thank answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Panetta. I wish you would answer my question. Again, I have. You didn't. You tell didn't, me when you, you did it. You didn't, you didn't accept my answer. Tell me when you did it and who you talked to. It's been posted online. Where have you been? You know, that's rude. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the public wish to be heard on any issue, please raise your hand. Yes, sir. Actually, we normally don't have people at the second time. Go ahead, Bob, quickly. Bob By dead, I mean I took out less mackerels out of that water. You're supposed to collect 100 within an hour. I was there four hours. We couldn't get 20, and they were dead. Nobody's arguing it. I, I'm, only, I'm only specifying that the water is dead. That's why I was trying to, that's why I was trying to clarify with the, with the last person up here is, Mr. Smith actually shared those very concerns right. uh, with me, at least, and, and and we will with the entire with everybody. The bottom line: hasn't been. there is a serious problem, gentlemen, and we need it addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mary Nunry, Canal Street, in Ledgewood. Would you be willing to ask the Department of Justice to come in? to investigate this whole mess. The DEP isn't helping us. You guys obviously can't help us. Who can help us? Any other questions or comments? I'd like to know who can help us because we're sick. No. And that's the concern and that's what we're trying to address. The Department of Justice, last time I know, has no bearing on the health and welfare of the Roxbury citizens. So while I agree that it might be important to find out who or why, if something took place or underhanded or anything like that outside of a developer that went beyond his scope of work, okay, but I'm that asking that you that doesn't help us correct what is out there right now, which we had no input into. We're working with and litigation with the person that did bring it to us. I'm it's asking ongoing you though. at a great expense to this township, not this council, this township and everybody that lives here, including you and me. I know it's been at a great expense to all of us, but I'm asking you, if who can help us? Who do we go to? We continue right for now is to contact DEP with any specific questions. Let us know. We do, we do follow up on those. And we also post answers when we get them on our website to keep everybody informed to the best of our ability. We've been very transparent during this. Many questions that have come up in the last month we're finding have been on the website, in many cases, up to a year. So while it's ongoing, we don't expect everybody to remember everything. It just shows you that a lot of these things are being addressed, and we're trying. It's not perfect. We're not saying this is a, 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 a wonderful thing by any stretch of the imagination. It's horrible. I mean, none we'll of us have asked we'll for this. To, to address it. You're right. None of us. None of us have asked for this. None of us. Everybody in this room included. And we just want answers. We want to know when we can start feeling better, when we can go outside again. Mr. Mayor, yes. I would like to comment in regards to, in regards to specific health issues. 
I would encourage you again to try and reach out, and it's on our website, to try and reach out to Robert Wood Johnson. I mean, you, 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 do, you do that. I, I don't understand. I mean, they're the preeminent experts in this field. But people have never availed themselves, although they feel ill. I, I know, uh, Carl, except for, I know that you have. <coughs> Thank you. Carl, Carl's family has. But other people have not availed themselves to this. I have gotten doctor's notes from my own doctor saying that the dump has caused my asthma to be worse because of this friggin' dump. Once again, if you have those doctor notes, if you haven't provided them to I have provided them to you to, guys. To the part, to our health department, we forwarded them down to them, we'll follow up with them. That's what we've always asked. We, can, we don't have any ability to, to affect in, in, a, uh, in a manner that a physician would have to, to, to help that. We can try to, we're trying to make to eliminate what is causing you. That's our prime goal and concern. Yeah, but it's, it's like whenever you get lies from the DEP, you get cover-ups well, every I, time I, you turn around. And I'm not saying it's your guys' fault, but you get cover-ups whenever you turn around. Is, have you reached out to Robert Wood Johnson? No. Can I have them reach out to you directly? I honestly don't know if I would do that right about now. Okay. When you, when, you, when you can get back to us on that, I would really love for them to talk to you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else in public wish to be heard? I, I'd just like to follow up from what she said. Somebody, uh, any, any, any other members of the public wish to be heard? Please raise your hand. Seeing none. I'd just like to follow up what she said. Um, Mr. Ratz, you know this because you've got Kathy to talk to the uh, person in the health department. And names I can't disclose, just like you guys can't, information that another person went to another doctor that didn't even know what was going on, and there was a letter in there from somebody here that says, we're not allowed to talk about that. So there's other stuff going on, and I just want to let you know that we know. I know nothing about Thank that. you. Uh, we we'll close the public portion. Do we have an executive session? Not for me. Not for me, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, we're going to bring up the one that I think we're the usual, but I think we're okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.